Hey everybody, it is me. I am hiding this chair, but I am not lowering it because I'm being stubborn. So I'm not doing a reading tonight, but I did want to try to talk, to touch, to touch, to touch, to touch on the idea of manifestation because I know somebody asked me about it before, but I never really got into it. Manifestation is a lot like spell casting and spell work, you know. I, I, I do witch shit. I do witchcraft, right? I'm not wicked. I don't do dogma. And I don't follow the whole, like, free will shit. If you're breathing air, you're imposing your free will on things. It's not, kind of like time travel. You can't travel through time and think that you're not fucking with the shit that's around. You know, air moves, land, dust, all that stuff. So, you know, you're constantly imposing your will on everybody. So that really doesn't matter, right? So manifestation is a lot like magic spell work, right? And the thing about magic spell work is, is you are supposed to act as though this shit has already happened for you. Um, that's usually how I interpret the whole, like, um, what people say, give it to God thing, or give it, or let the universe take care of it. That's the only way I can assess it. Now, manifestation is really weird in my case, because I'm not sure entirely how it works for me. It works. Like, odd shit is ha like, there have been videos that I've watched where, like, I just happened to say something without really thinking about it, and the person would say, would say the exact same like word for word the exact same shit I've actually said and I, and I just kind of would sit there and be like okay was that already in there or did I put it there without knowing it there's also the work on the whole astral plane and then there's the rixum or what I like or what some people call the veil or what most commoners would call death or where dead people go or where souls go or wherever the fuck their house is one of those things and all those kind of different dimensions and realms play a very important role because like when you manifest um you're kind of going into the astral in a future preset and if you can astral project or even lucid dream like that helps too you don't have to do those things um meditation helps a lot with like figuring out how to do manifestation i've never gone that route um astral projection is one of those things that i just do by chance and i didn't know i did it until like recently and then I figured it out but with the astral plane when you're manifesting you're kind of trying to go to the astral plane because that's like uh, uh one to three years advance our time right like when you start coming up with shit or whatever you already did that shit in the astral plane the, the time travel shit right like it's weird it's complicated but it makes sense to me you know I'm sharing shit that like I and I'm trying to like not go into everything that I believe because you know you're not supposed to let people know exactly what you believe because once you do they'll find ways of like um killing your shit because once you start questioning your own shit that's when you start like losing your faith and faith is very important if you're going to man I mean if you don't have faith then like it's really gonna be hard to like do a lot of shit and I know there will be skeptics out there who be like none of this shit is real that's why you don't what well why are you here why are you here listening to me talk some fucking nonsense you silly silly goose you especially with astral shit you're trying to you're trying to project something within the astral plane to help you encourage your kind of future self to establish little like uh treasure chests like in a video game, like Legend of Zelda, in different odd places, right? You know, people say that, like, a lot of people say that there's no such thing as luck. I don't really believe that. But it's just, luck is different. Like, if I'm, I, I mean, if I want a car, and I go about to manifest that, what I'm doing is I'm sending my, kind of like my astral person, which would be like my future person, a signal, if they get it. And that's the biggest thing. It, it all depends on if they get it or not, or if they're off, or if you're off doing something else while you're trying to send yourself something. And it's starting to really get confusing. And I hope someone's following, right? But you're sending a signal to your astral person, which is your future self. And what that could do, if they get it, they can set up little things in front of you to be like, oh yeah. Look at this. Like you're almost acting like your own spirit guide. And because, like, your future self is already setting things up for you to get it already, 
Which I don't think, which I don't know how any of this fucking works, because it's just like, I don't, I don't know, but this is just how it works for me, right? So because you're kind of like astral future self has this stuff set up for you to get it already, as you come by through your actual self, you'll come into that shit. And it'll affect the astral plane version of yourself. You're definitely, like, you're constantly setting things up for yourself in the astral plane, and you can go there willingly get other things moving too like it's not like you can't go into the astral plane and change stuff right but that's kind of like what manifestation is um a lot of other people do manifestations through like um thinking things um using vocations or invocations like you know like i will that i don't know i will that my best friend was right here you know, there you go. There, Like, you can will that, or you can will, like, I wish my best friend call or text me. Some people can do that. And, like, when they say that, someone will call or message them. Or sometimes they'll just even think of the person, and boom, they show up right there. Right? Um, not even saying a word. And the universe kind of works that way. Especially if you've already opened your mind to let the universe in. Like, I kind of don't want to. I'd rather have an open conversation. Like, nobody else needs to hear a conversation. But still, I will go by myself. We don't need to have conversations in my head. That would be weird. And I really don't want to go out on that route. Because that's just... No. No, no, no. I'm good. So, think about that with manifestation. Now, another thing about manifestation is you have to also be careful about what you say out loud. Um, Sagittarius, I'm going to drag you for a minute. But out of love. Out of love, okay. But you guys have this habit of complaining about shit a lot. And that's kind of a more form of manifestation, too. You know, like, every time you say, I hope, I wish, I want, the universe is just kind of acting like a crazy ex-girlfriend and being like, yeah, you'll still keep wanting that. I feel useful now. Like, there you go. You're going to keep wanting this. You're going to keep asking for this because this is what you're asking for. Because, you know, the universe is a crazy girlfriend. It expects you to pay half the rent up front every month first of the fucking month. Oh, you don't have rent? Well, I guess you're gonna keep wishing you you, left, you live somewhere other than my fucking garage floor. That's what the universe does, because the universe is not just going to bring stuff to you. Much like using spells, much like witchcraft, you actually have to work towards the goal. What you're creating is a greater possibility for your goal to be achieved. Magic and uh, manifestation doesn't work like that. Like, no. Um, what you're doing is raising your probability, which is like a chaos and um, discordian kind of thing. Though discordian is more like um, if Alice in Wonderland was on drugs. Acid. Because then nothing makes fucking sense, but it all makes sense, and you can't argue against it. Uh, bitter Tea, for example, is a great um, proverbial story. Um, a man was making, it w was went to his um, whatchamacallit to make some tea, but then he found an old cup of tea. So he started to be like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to re-brew this tea. It should be fine. And as he brewed this tea, he realized... That there was a voice in his head that was just like, you know, hey, the tea's going to end up being bitter. But despite this, he worked very frivolously. Well, not frivolously. um, Furiously, I think the word I was thinking of. Um, that's probably not the right word, but it's still same meaning, right? He furiously worked on that tea. And then he put the tea in the cup. And then he drank that tea. And lo and behold, the voice was right. It was bitter. That's the scordian, because it's just like, what was the fucking point of the story? So you know the tea was bitter. Keep that in a, a suggestion because when you keep like, um, if you say things like hope and want and wish and I don't want something or I don't want blah blah blah, don't ever say I don't want because that's just a signal for the universe to just send it your way because it's just like, oh well since you keep asking for this not to happen because it's almost like, you know, like if you have to ask, like you probably don't deserve it or some shit. I don't know what the fucking universe does. Usually it's supposed to work with you. But in a, like, but in a really fucked, it's like Thanos' plan, right? It makes sense, but it's a really fucked up method to do what he was trying to do. The universe is kind of like that. But, it's for your own benefit. We all come here for some reason. I don't know why, but it's like hard lessons make us 
much more stronger and significant, right? Um, but yeah, don't complain. Um, and remember that you're only increasing the probability because you're sending it to the astral plane. So that way, your astral plane can set up little fucking things right here in a line. So it'll be a better chance. Really? Hold on, I need to water my cat. Okay, cat is sufficiently watered, right? Um, another thing to remember about manifestation, you have to be specific. Extremely specific. Like, literally. Because if you're not, you will get exactly what you wish for. That's why I say, don't hope, don't want, don't wish, don't, I don't want, blah, blah, blah. Don't do any of that shit. Because the universe is really fucking specific. Crazy ex-girlfriend, or crazy girlfriend. Whatever you want to look on it. You don't have to state it out, but you should at least have the intention in mind. Because, like, let's say you, uh, let's say you want a bike right so you're just like universe i really would like a bike i hope i get a bike i wish i get a bike lo and behold a bike comes to you right and you're just like yay and then the police pull you over because the bike's stolen and you don't know the name of the dude who stole it and you're the only person with it no witnesses but you have the bike just an example i mean i'm not saying it'll go that route but it can you just have to be really careful, and you have to remember to work for it, too. That's an important thing, because you're asking the universe to help you with something, but it's still expecting you to also help yourself as well. It, it, like, you just can't put faith into it and not get anything out, or expect something out of it, because that's not how it works. You actually gotta, like, have the faith and work towards that fucking goal, because if you don't work towards that goal, how is the universe gonna know that you're serious about marriage? Or children living on a porch growing old together depending on what it is you're asking for or trying to receive or create or demonstrate that you have power in whatever it is maybe it's a taco maybe it's a puppy maybe it's a new car which by the way like that's kind of what happened with my car it was like 24 hours and then boom found a new car <laughs> It was just kind of like, holy shit. <laughs> like, I don't know. Manifesting scares me a little bit. Because it's just like, I really do get what I've been asking for. And it's all turned out well. But I know, at some point, I'm going to ask for something. And I'm going to regret it. Because it's going to, it has to happen at least once to everybody. Thought invoked reality, right? So, check this out. Uh, Rich Lobb actually talked about this, I think. He was better at it than I was. He told the story of where um, he, was, he woke up in a bad mood. And he kept it in him all day. Like, he couldn't shake it. And then, like, he was approached by this woman who was passing him by. It's just like, are you okay? And he was just like, eh, yeah, I'm fine. Walked away. And then Universe was like, that was me. I was just checking up on you because you're kind of acting like a dick. Mind you, he looked back, the woman was already down the street, like she never talked to him. And he was just like, oh. So keep in mind what's in your thoughts, because it's not that you can create shit with the thoughts that are in your head. It's how you deal with your thoughts and the way you are reacting to them in reality. You know, if you're in a shitty mood in your head all day, that stuff rubs off on people. And it rubs off on the universe, too. So you have to make sure you're in a pretty decent mood. Unless you're cursing someone, and then that's a completely different fucking deal. But don't do that, because that's not a cool thing to do. Because when you curse people, um, you're manifesting something in them. Like, and, like, you could end up getting emotionally or energetically attached to those people, too. You know, um, every spell comes with a price. As does manifestation. Everything comes with a price. That's why it's much more easier to work towards the goal and ask the universe and helping to assist you towards the goal you're getting to. Like, a little, like, boost. You know? Kind of like that. But, um, when you do negative things to people, you can be attached. You can feel what's going on to them. You know? Like, a, like a, an unseverable cord. Is attached to you. One of those, like, cup phone things with the strings that kids used to play with. It's kind of like that. Like, you really aren't close to each other, but you can hear what's going on. And it's kind of like that. So you have to be careful if you're going to curse people. 
Because you're going to attach yourself to them without knowing it, and then you're just going to deal with all their bullshit. Uh, but though most curses only work if they don't know you did it. Of course, most curses don't work if you don't believe in them either, which is another reason why you shouldn't curse, because it's like, if you're cursing people, it means you believe in it too. Which means you're just as susceptible, so don't believe in it, don't do it, don't say it, don't think... <laughs> Keep in mind what you say about others comes back, too. Because it's a form of cursing and shit. Like, um, like there's nothing wrong with defending yourself. Um, but don't go around reading your mouth about people when it is not deserved. Because that shit will come back very quickly. It spins. Um, especially if you're in a manifestation mode period where stuff that you've been thinking of or shit that you're working towards starts to come about to you. Ooh. And you gotta watch, especially that shit starting to come up as a surprise, because that means that, like, anything you do and say is going to come around in that circle. Um, it doesn't boomerang like people think karma does. No, it goes in a circle. It takes us fucking time. Except right now. Because Saturn's in a retrograde. So you better watch out when he turns the fuck back around. I don't know. Like, a good way of starting out with manifestation. What would be a good way of doing that? Um... um, 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 um. Alright, the best way of starting out with manifestations, I would think. Alright. If none of you... Like, there's this movie, Inspector Gadget, with, um... Matthew Brodowick. Or Brodowich. Or whatever the fuck. He, he played Simba in The Lion King. Adult Simba in The Lion King. Like, the one that nailed Nala. Not the one that was just running around. But, the dude, Matthew Brodowich, he played in Inspector Gadget as Inspector Gadget. But that's not who I want to talk about. I want to talk about the two f characters who you meet. Um, the scientist and his daughter, who later gets banged by Matthew Brodowich. Or whatever. I might as well start calling him Broccoli, because I'm not going to get his name right. You know, I I'm not. The scientist and his daughter are trying to make some sort of technology that will respond like actual human limbs, right? So what it was is like he was sitting there and he was trying to focus and make his foot move, right? He kept trying to stare at his foot and make it move. It, or this artificial foot. But he couldn't do it with his mind. So at some point, you guys need to behave. At some point, the um, guy's daughter just like, you know what, I'm going to get us some snackage, you know. Maybe some opium to keep us up. I'll be right back, Dad. And he's just like, okay, Princess. And he leans back, and he starts humming with his eyes closed, and he starts moving his real foot. To which the fake foot started moving. And the daughter comes back and sees this, and she was just like, how did you do that? And he was just like, do what? And, like, they tried it again. But this time he went ahead and moved his foot. And then it was just like, Oh, it's not voluntary, it's by will. Like, it's an actual limb. Where you don't even think about it. It just does it. No concentration. So you kind of, like, give it to the universe, and then you just don't concentrate on it anymore. You just feel it happening, like it is natural. Which, I don't know how that works if you don't have an imagination, but, like, you can, Like, I believe in you. If you don't have an imagination, you can meditate on shit. Um... Which is a really good way of getting into astral projection. Which will help you, like, learn how to deal more with manifestation on that kind of way. Because, like, you know, it kind of varies. Keep that shit in mind, you know. Um, when you meditate, it helps you. Like, and the best way of meditating is by focusing. We'll start out with, like, close your eyes. Breathe in. Just do what, I, just do what I'm telling you right now. Just close your eyes. Just, I'll do it with you. Just... Breathe in for 13 seconds as slowly as possible. Hold it for two seconds and then release it. Same amount of time. And then wait another two seconds and do the same thing over again. And then what you're going to do is you're going to envision yourself in the middle of a meadow or a field where there are, like, there are trees in the distance. And there's light shimmering through the trees like it's like sunlight surrounded in this field with all of these flowers and you can feel the grass beneath your feet just tickling at your skin and you can smell all of the beautiful flowers the nectar you can hear the hummingbirds and the other um robins and cardinals like chirping in the distance and like 
bringing forth the day. You can feel the warmth of the sun all over your skin and as you breathe and take all of this in, you'll be able to hear a voice. You hear this voice and it calls to you. And it beckons you to turn around. And behind you, there's a cottage. You've never been to this cottage before. It looks like a lo it looks like a log cabin, where you can definitely make out where the logs were like cut and separated and stacked neatly together to create a nice warmth for anybody who lives inside. Like the chimney has dark smoke coming out, but nothing that says that anything's cooking or that a fire is burning greatly hot. No, it's just slowly coming to an end. And then you enter into this cabin. You don't need permission because the door is already cracked open slightly. So you just push it open and there you are inside. At first the light from the outside from the sun that glares in through the trees um, makes it hard to see because it is dark in that cabin. But eventually somebody lights a lantern and then you're able to see the faces of all the people who have ever done you wrong. You sit at the very end of the table that is closest to the door because you're not going to be there long. You're only there to make your final words. During this portion, you are just sitting there listening to everything they ever had to say and everything they've ever wanted to do to you specifically, if not for you. And as you listen to them, you nod gently, understanding that um, there are things of the past that cannot be taken away and you have to acknowledge the fact that these things have been done either for you or against you, with you or without you. It really doesn't matter. And as you have nodded your head to each and every one that speaks to you, you bid them goodbye and they vanish in their seats until eventually all of them are gone and you're the only one left in the seat. So now you can get up and you can walk out of that cabin door. Now as you walk out, you hear the door slam and you realize it's been locked from the inside. And the fire it's, that was originally in the chimney is now just burning away until the cabin catches fire. You can only take a few steps back as you see all the flames rushing in. But eventually the cabin's consumed. There wasn't anybody in there, just simple ghosts. Simple memories, simple voices, simple faces that you don't even recognize anymore. Except for the attachment and love you once had for them. That emotional, energetic core that is attached to you. This is a releasing meditation. So, you can open your eyes now. That's the practice. Use that to begin with if you want to. Take your time with it. Uh, meditation is a very, very strenuous exercise because it kind of demands your attention for the most part. But if you practice it, it becomes something that like you end up wanting to do like all of the time. Which is why I don't try to astral project anymore. Because <laughs> the last time, oh my god, I was a fucking heathen. Um, thank you, dude, for letting me know I could do that. But, like, that was a bad idea. Because, like, I just ran amok all over town. Made people trip. But it was funny, so it's okay. But, yeah, so... Um, take what you will. Now, there are other people who are really good with manifestations, too. You don't have to take my word for it. I am just a simple bitch who happens to be a witch who knows a few tricks of the trade and whatnot. My method's way different than other people's. Like, there are other, um, tarot readers or spiritual guides who can lead you to different ways to, um, manifestation. Um, I'm not the only one. I don't even think I explained it very well, but I hope you guys kind of get the gist of what I was going for. So, like, um, do some research, and there are different places on the web, but I would say video is a little better, because having somebody explain it is better than trying to read it on paper sometimes.
I just, I just feel like you need that lore in order to get that connection right. So, like, enjoy. Do your best. And you guys take it easy. I will see you tomorrow. I'm just taking a break for tonight. Because, uh. Just, uh. Love you. Bye-bye.